Hey everyone, this is your host Leah, and you're listening to How to Be First, the podcast where we share and reflect on the hardships, successes, and experiences we have faced as first-generation students at UNK. Hi, and welcome to How to Be First by first-generation students for first-generation students. I'm Leah. I'm Jenny. And I'm Erlen. I'm Diana. All right, and today I want to go ahead and start talking about when did all of you guys find out that you were first generation? Because I didn't even realize it till I got to college. I think mine was senior year of high school when we like first started applying for colleges. It asked us that question. I think I like asked my teacher, like, I don't know, like, what does it mean to be first gen? Which just said like, your parents don't go to college. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm first gen. So that's how I knew. I think for me, it was my freshman year of high school when I first applied for Carnibound, the, um, the full ride here for UNK. And they talked about it and I kind of understood it, but I feel like I didn't really start accepting or really like understanding what first gen was until I got to college. And it didn't honestly really hit me that I was first gen until my senior year, which is this year. So it's like, wow, I really am first gen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, in the, I'm in the same boat. We were, we both have the same scholarship. So it was almost like a You show up to college and you're like, oh, wait, I'm a first gen kid. And Mm -hmm. it's like I knew that I was a first gen student my uh, my freshman year of high school. And then I mean, you don't really understand the whole what that even means until you're like four years deep. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I thought with my sister being older than me, if she went to university, which she didn't end up going, I was like, if she goes, I won't be first gen anymore. But since you're in that generation, you're still considered first generation. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't know that. And um, also my parents, my dad dropped out of college and then my mom did graduate, but she did a two year degree at a tech school. And so I thought for sure I wasn't first gen until I got to college and my advisor told me I was. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think, was like the same thing with right? my older brother. I'm like, well, he goes to school, so I'm definitely not, but I am. So it's, it's my own. So that was cool to know. I'm the oldest in my family, so it's kind of like I'm really out here doing it by myself, and I really don't know what I'm doing, so it's like I have no one else to look up to or no one else to yeah. really, like, bank off of because right. it's like I'm literally the first in my entire family to, like, be born here in the U.S., go to school in the U.S., do anything, so it's kind of like, okay, I really am the first to do it, and um, it's tough. <laughs> it was, it was scary, Loki. Yeah. Like, you you come to college, and you're just kind of expecting that. Everything's going to be like the movies and all the things. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, my first week here, I was like, oh, I have, like, 150 bucks in my pocket for, like, <laughs> this is college, right. I guess. And so yeah. I get here, and then I find out, you you know, you get to your dorm, and then you're, like, buying stuff for your dorm. And I'm like, well, there's my $150. Yeah. So what do I do now? Yeah. Good thing is I live, like, 40 minutes away okay. because I'm from Lex. But it's almost like you get here, and then your parents don't know what yeah. to do to help you. Like, my parents didn't even help me move into to campus. Because they don't understand that's like a huge thing, you know, yeah. as a college kid, you're freshman year, you're yeah. like, I'm so excited to move in and meet all these people. And then you're like, well, there's like no family support right now because I, I'm first gen and they don't, right. under- yeah. they don't understand that this is something like kind of important, yeah. you know, yeah. just a simple thing of even just like moving in. You're like, all right, well, this is like the first, yeah. the first sign of first generation, like, ah, like this sucks. But like, also I'm very thankful that I even get to come to college, you know? Yeah. yeah. And they just compare it to what they know, exactly. what they've seen you yeah. go through high school mm-hmm. and um, what they went through. Um, my parents are quite a bit older. They are already retired. And so what they went through um, during their age is completely different what I went through. And also the fact that they only went to like a two year university compared to like going to UNK and everything that's expected and required from you is a lot more than what they yeah. did. So they try to understand for sure, like, oh, I think I understand where you're coming from with this and this and how much your workload is with working on top of it. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you guys might work, too, and just like working full time, going to school full time, trying to have a social life. Mm -hmm. And then them asking you, like, why don't you have any money? And (laughs) (laughs) I was like, okay, I have some things I needed to cover, but just things like that. And. Just like, you know, they want the best for you and they're trying to understand. But at a certain point, you understand, like, they won't fully get it. Yeah. Yeah, especially it's like going home. Like freshman year, I think I went home like almost every weekend, but then I got a job. So I'm like, I can't go home every weekend because I have to work or I have to study. 
and they just want to understand like do you just not want to see me do you like not mm-hmm. yeah do you not miss no. us anymore i'm like i miss you every day i just don't have the time yeah because mm-hmm. i have to go to school you know and try to try to make it so you want to make them a priority too mm-hmm. but you understand like you have to get this stuff done here first mm-hmm. before you can even make them a priority because like i said we're all putting money into this and um trying our hardest to get through this and so sometimes you have to put that first over your family when that normally isn't something i usually put my family yeah. first so mm-hmm. that's also like a hard switch up too yeah, yeah definitely. finding harmony between like family time and school time social socializing yeah, yeah. Being, like a normal human. yeah i think that's tough especially when like for me my family my parents went to school up till they were like in middle school so they don't even Same. they don't even know what it is to even fully finish like an education yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. So comparing that to like what I'm doing, it, it's hard. Like it's a it's a trade off. Yeah. I I tell her Len this all the time. Um, is that it, being in school is a trade off. It's a, a trade off for being able to spend time with your family, being able to spend time with your nieces, nephews, family. That's that's super. I mean, obviously, that's like a pillar in everybody's life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But being able to find like a harmony between classes, work, trying to have a social life, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's everything. Internships, once you try to get into your yeah. senior year. Yeah, it's like every year I promise my parents that I'm going to make it home yeah. more weekends and I make it home less weekends yeah. because of everything it's that's, harder. that's happening. Awesome. Um, and then being first generation and like obviously like not knowing everything did you guys lean more towards UNK because I know I certainly did just with like seeing the prices of everything and the layouts between like our college and then like other sister colleges and just colleges throughout the state um and I knew I wasn't going to even try to go out of state because their tuition is so much more but I definitely leaned towards UNK just because they just seem very welcoming and just the prices in general so a reason you guys came here? <clears throat> um, so I came to UNK because of the Carnegie Mellon scholarship my freshman year of high school. And honestly, I knew I always wanted to go to college and I wanted to like further my education, but I didn't know how I was going to get there. Like, what are the first steps? And it wasn't until like UNK came to our high school and really gave us a presentation and really talked to us, really did step by step with us. And, you know, and their main focus was like first generation low income students. Like, how are we going to get you to college? Like, and honestly, like the fact that UNK was able to come to my high school, like come into my territory, I didn't have to leave the comfort of where I was or stuff and come talk to me about school and like what was p- possible for me, things I had to apply for. And they kind of came in, they made sure my grades were good every month and like just really was that support system that, you know, apart from already having like a, you know, full ride to UNK, it's kind of like, OK, like this was pretty much out of UNL, you know, and UNK, UNK was the only school that came to talk to me and really showed interest in like having those first generation students and having students who wouldn't normally have a voice at the table, definitely have a for sure seat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I came to UNK. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I came here because of the scholarship and I always tell like everyone, it's like, if I didn't go to college, I would be in landscaping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I had like what I wanted to do. And I still love landscaping. That's my yeah. thing. But um, yeah, I honestly just, I don't know if I would have chosen UNK or yeah. honestly, even college period. I know that we would, Lexington was always just like a, a school where we always went everywhere. We went to, we went to way more campus visits here than any other campus, I think. We went to like Hastings Community College a lot, Hastings College, and the only one that was consistent with making sure that we understood what college was was yeah. literally UNK. That's it. Like yeah. we were always, we were always here for multicultural things, for when like um, MGC would do their thing, and yeah. you know. But yeah, UNK. I thank God that I was able to get a full ride here because I don't even feel like college would have been on the table. But I always knew I was gonna be great. I was gonna, I was gonna do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it was either college or figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine was a little bit different. So I went to a really small school. So we definitely didn't have anybody go to a small little town and talk to anybody. But um, my parents made it like, I always knew I was going to go to college. Like my parents were always excited. Like my dad always wanted me to go to NK. Like I think the first time he said it was probably like when I was in like sixth grade. So I knew I was going to college. It wasn't a doubt about it. But they kind of let me choose. And I was like young, so I never looked at prices of yeah. anything. 
Um, but my parents were like, we'll make it work, whatever you want. So I was looking at like Doan and the other sister colleges. I wanted to go to school in California for a long time. Um, but then I had my first cadaver lab here. And so then I really liked UNK. So I'm like, that's so cool. I get to experience that. So that's why I came here. But now that I'm here, I'm like, I'm glad I came here because I would have definitely, I don't think I would have made it at UNL. Way more expensive, less like resources, I feel like when it comes to like multicultural. And I just feel like we're closer here too. Yeah. So definitely now that I'm here, I'm like, thank, thank God. God that I came yeah. here. Yeah. For sure. And with like how I said my sister went to CCC, that was like what was kind of set for me was mm -hmm. like, you're going to go to community college. Like that's like the only way we're going to be able to afford this. And I would hear about, because my sister's four years older than me. So she was like, as I was going through high school, she was going through college. And so as my sister was getting through and um, my parents would tell me about how expensive it is because they didn't really want to tell her. But I was like, right. I'm taking all this on and thinking like, there's no way I even want to ask about going to a four year university. And then my mom, she like heard me say that to my dad. And she's like, we don't ever want you to think that's a problem because education is like super important to my family. And um, on my mom's side, no one's ever gone to college. None of my cousins, none of my aunts, uncles. And so like that was a big thing to her to for me to feel comfortable and even asking about going to colleges and going on visits and making sure that like I wasn't not doing what I wanted to do or thought I could do because I had the grades and I had everything for it. And so she's like, we'll just try it out and see what we can do. And then I got quite a few scholarships and it ended up being less expensive than my sister's for or two years at um, community college. And so um, just the fact that that can happen, I didn't even know that was possible to get like something like UNK down below levels of like CCC and Hastings mm -hmm. or even community colleges here in Kearney. I just didn't think that was possible, but luckily like, my mom and my dad both pushed me to do this because it was something they didn't really have the opportunity to do. And so I'm really thankful for that and that yeah. UNK can provide something like that. Um, what are some of the best things about being first generation? Hmm. That's tough. Yeah, I don't think that's tough. I don't, put it that way. Like, yeah, I don't usually it's all the downfalls. Yeah. I don't think that, I mean, like, the pluses of one, just being in college yeah. is great. You, I enjoy going to my classes. I love learning about my major. First, being first generation is not fun sometimes. It's not. It's not. And it's like, yeah. and I'll be brutally honest. Like, I just, I think that with all of the things that you, you put on your shoulders, there's like so much, there's so much. When your parents like don't understand the, the idea of, going to classes and having good grades and making sure that you're staying on top of your work. Mm -hmm. My parents will like never understand. They're always like, Jenny, like, I know you got this. And like, you're, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Just, you got this. It's like one more year. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, dad, like, thanks. <laughs> because you carry <laughs> thanks, it like, so you're well not gonna do they much. don't even think you're struggling. Yeah. You carry it so well. Yeah. And it's like, there's so much behind that. It's like for me, I'm, the only thing that comes to mind when I think of like the best things about being first generation is that I I can do this. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. UNK is obviously very supportive. Everything. I mean, my professors are so cool. My department's yeah. awesome, and like they're they're supportive on my goals. When it comes to my family, I think I've battled so much on finding a balance between like finding like myself. And then balancing it with like my culture back home, because it's like you you're too. When I go home, it's like Jenny, you're you're too smart to like be hanging out with us because all the like the way that you talk is different, and the way that you the way that you carry yourself is different. Like, why aren't you more like Mexican like us? And I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, like being educated does not make you any less Mexican. Right. And I feel like right. a lot of people don't understand that. Don't get that. that. It's like my cousins, my uncles, my aunts. It's like, oh, like we're so proud of you because you're at college. And I'm like, well, thank you. But you guys all judge me when I come back home. <laughs> yeah. And I start talking to you guys and ask me how many people I get to talk to in Spanish when I'm here at UNK. Not that many. Yeah. Like I remember my first class, we were talking about this earlier. When we, we had our first class. 
it, I was my it was like my chemistry class or something when I was pre dental. Yeah. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. before you figure I remember, out what you're doing. I remember. <laughs> like walking into my chemistry class, you look around and you're like, I was the only person of color in that room. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm terrified. Coming from a school where all of my classes were like, what, twenty three people and like twenty of them were Hispanic. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. And then after that it's Everybody's like, oh, you should totally cut, talk to your professor. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. Like, yeah. why would I do that? Like, when you come <laughs> when you come to college as a first-generation student, you have to be prepared for doing things alone, understanding your emotions alone, trying to unlearn all of the things that you've been taught living in your house, and then coming to college and relearning something that's going to help you prepare for a good future. Yeah. And your parents don't understand that because they're like, why are you trying to be different? And I'm like, yeah. it's like different is good right yeah. now. I want to be different. I mm-hmm. want to grow. I want to change. And yeah, it's, I don't know if I can. And I feel like the, the best. best part of it being first gen isn't being first gen. It's being first gen for your next generation. Yeah. If we have kids, I'm so happy yeah. that they won't have to deal with any of the stuff we have to deal with now because you understand it a little bit more. Like, we obviously won't understand everything fully in their generation to come, right. just as no one understands everything that happened to us in our generation. And we've been through a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. we went through college through a pandemic. Like, and that's so overlooked, I feel like. Like, that was hard. Like, the one, like, good part about college I felt like was, like, the socialization and having all that and that being stripped from our college years, that was hard. And like the fact that like no one understands the pandemic. The, and then like, um, so we are all going through that first generation. Mm-hmm. And so just the fact that we can be first generation and be that like how you said, like a source for like your younger siblings, a source for maybe potential kids you'll have in the future. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they won't have to go through it alone. like it's hard to find like a good part about being first generation when you look at it so closely. But when you look off into the distance, I feel like it helps a lot more and like makes it feel worth like some of the pains and like some of the struggles you go through being first gen. And I, I just feel like that helps me get through some of the hardest parts is like, I could help my sister if she decides to go back to college. I could help kids. If I have kids help my sister's kids because my sister and her boyfriend never went to college and so I could help their kids if they ever need help like just being that person for someone and um since we didn't always have that person for us yeah I think the same because I remember my freshman year or was the summer before I went to freshman to college freshman year I went to Mexico to see like my family and I remember one of the last days I was there so my two cousins are probably like eight or nine and they're saying goodbye to me and oh sad full of emotions they're like you know, like, that's so cool. I don't, they said, they're like, I'm so glad that you're going to go to school because I know that we will never be able to do that. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was, like, blowing up in tears. So I was like, honestly, it might be true because yeah. of just, like, how it is over there. And so I think it's more like we're, like, in, like inspiration almost. Like, yeah. more our other cousins, our mm-hmm. younger siblings, and, of course, get to help our future children if they mm-hmm. ever happen. But, like, we're, like, a resource now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say, like, yeah, picking back all of you, like, first gen kind of sucks. It really does. Yeah. And, and all that. But when you look at the broader image of things, mm-hmm. it's like, no, yeah, you really do get to be the trailblazer in your family, whether yeah. that's culturally, emotionally, spiritually, all that kind of stuff. Because at the same time that we're here, we're also relearning and unlearning those things that are, like, probably bad. And we're, like, we're breaking trauma cycles and we're doing yeah. all these things. And, um, like I have, all my cousins are younger than me and they're all really little. Like I'm older than everyone by at least a decade, which is so <laughs> sad. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> like I have little cousins and everyone and honestly being a Latina and being a woman of color and having your cousins be like, you know what? I'm going to go to school because of you. If you can do it, I can mm-hmm. do it. And it's like, that's all you ever want to hear is yeah. that you are inspiring other younger kids to come to school because if you can do it, then they can do it. And, and that just warms my heart. Like, yes, you go, girl, go yeah. to school, yeah. go study STEM, go do what you want to do. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to be your biggest fan. And so I think that's probably the best part of it is like you all said, I'll reiterate, yeah. like being an inspiration for yeah. someone mm-hmm. and someone to look up to. 
it's it's the least that could happen after like all the tears that you shed yeah. and all mm-hmm. the like silent cries and screaming mm-hmm. and stress that you have mm-hmm. is like hopefully at the end of the day it's worth it because I'll be able to change someone's mindset about being able to come to school or not. Just being a, being a leader in our in our generation. That's that's the least that we can do. Yeah, <laughs> that's the least that we can do because within just like the world right now with everything that's been going on being a good leader and, and being so that other people can look up to is going to make like it's a ripple effect yeah. yeah yeah and just like on the opposite side with like my parents like i feel like i'm kind of giving them a sense of going to college because they're living vicariously through me and they love hearing about all of it and just seeing like a sense of pride in them too which sometimes i know it's looked down upon like having such pride but it's like i'm proud of everyone that goes to college it's Mm -hmm. hard yeah and like you should be proud of yourself and i feel like that's like sometimes looked down upon and like just remember like you are christian it's hard like just the fact that you're getting through it is says a lot and so and then also just like seeing like a switch up or like a change in dynamic with like my parents like my parents have taught me a lot throughout my life and now They'll ask me questions and I'll actually know some of the answers now. And just seeing that change too. And then like um, being able to help them too with like, if they're struggling with um, even like mental health, my parent, that wasn't really taught back then. And um, (laughs) and, like (laughs) just like talking about that openly with them and them realizing like, Oh, you guys talk about that in college and like, College isn't all just about what you learn in classes. It's what you learn through the people around you, too. Mm -hmm. And I've learned so much through the people at UNK as well. And I think they're learning a lot through me because of those experiences I've had. And so just the fact that you can also, like, help out your parents as well as those who are younger than you, Mm -hmm. I think says a lot. That's crazy that you brought that up, though, about, like, mental health and I'll talk about communication within the family. Oh my gosh. Like, and our parents were never taught. They, like you said earlier, they know exactly what they were taught. Yeah. And I know only what they've taught me. And so yeah. when I come to school, I think I've learned something so deeply about just connecting with others and communicating with people that when I go back home, I've started to be almost like a, a mediator between conversations because they don't know how to have healthy communication. Yeah or like understand mental health, understand other people's emotions, especially within the, like for me, like the Mexican household, it's different. (laughs) It's different. Like it's what your dad says, because that's how it is. And that's how it's always going to be. There's no explanation. It's a a type of parenting. I learned about it in psychology. my Yeah. (laughs) But but it, it sucks. I mean, like you get home and you're like, well, this is not how you're supposed to communicate with your kids. Mm -hmm. You can't teach your 55 year old parents that. (laughs) Like, it's, that's how I am. It's like, I'm, yeah. I'm out here trying to teach you guys, but yeah. my job is not to teach you guys. And mm-hmm. my role is not to be taking care of the whole family. Where, mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like most families have that one person where it's like, that's the person that we go to for all of our problems or whether we need help with something. Yeah. And I'm glad that that's not me and my family, but <laughs> that's my other sister. Yeah. I got lots of other sisters to yeah. do that. So um, I'm glad that I've been able to experience college with being first generation just breaking the ice, yeah. just breaking the ice for everybody. Yeah. If I can do that, then yeah. my little cousins, their cousins, my cousin's kids yeah. will be able to have someone to look up to. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you guys so much for sharing all your stories. I think we covered a lot on how to define Christian and how every definition is different. Um, thank you guys for watching today. Um, we'll probably make a couple more episodes on this later. And so we hope to see you back. Thank you.